Today I'm gonna to show you how to make this simple transition and no, it's not 3D, no Blender, no Cinema 4D, super easy. Hey guys, my name is Evan Wynn. Welcome to 11% Tutorials. So I broke this tutorial into two parts. The first part, you're actually gonna to have to get your hands dirty. You're gonna to have to get out on the field and film some stuff. The second part is the fun part, the editing part. The effect can actually be done in any editing software and it's super easy, but today we're gonna to be using Premiere Pro. Here's what you'll need. A small rig clamp, a film combo stand, a background sheet of any color that contrasts with your item of choice. Also pause here, I actually forgot to mention this earlier, but you can actually replace all three of these first few items that I mentioned with a green screen if you have one. No, you don't need one, but it does help if you wanna avoid rotoscoping later on. Next is a camera with a wide lens. Oh, just kidding, I'm not throwing my camera. A longer lens, anything over 55 millimeters not throwing the lens either, a tripod, an item of your choice, today I'm using my shoe, and lastly, of course, the MVP, a string, a chain, or anything thin and rope-like. Don't worry, I promise all this stuff is important later on, just trust me. Now it's time to film. First, set up your tripod and get a wide shot. Try not to move the tripod at all during these first few shots for continuity. Now, regardless of whichever object you pick, you have to get two mandatory shots, the throw and the catch. For my first shot, since I picked my shoe, I pretended to kick my shoe into the air. Then I simply pretended to stomp and catch my shoe as if it landed back on my foot. This is important for making sure that your viewer can follow the motion of your shot and try to keep the focus of the object motion on the center of the frame. This is me messing up a bunch of times. Also, I should mention that I did grab a close-up shot of my shoe as I caught it. Now it's time for the fun part, but first you need to switch out for your longer lens. For this part, you'll need your stand or background or your green screen. Pin on the green screen actually, we'll come back to this later. You'll also need your object and your string here. Attach your string to your object. I'm looping this chain through one of my laces of my shoe. Look at that. That is the face of focus right there. And then once you're done, you should be able to hold your object by the string itself. I think you can kind of figure where this is all going, but essentially you're just going to hold your object in front of the background and spin it by the string. This is also me realizing that I'm going to have to hop around because I didn't bring a spare shoe. So make sure the entire object is surrounded by your background and spin it slowly. If you can't control a slow spin, then just shoot it in 60 FPS or above. It's also very important important here that you make sure you have a steady hand and don't lift or raise your hand too much because you have to account for that in post. Once you finish filming your object, remove the stand and set your camera to photo mode. I'm turning my camera vertical and taking a few wide shots of the empty space that I use, making sure that I get the sky above it. Very, very important. Now it's time to edit. Really quickly, before we go any further, if you ever run out of any cool visual effect ideas or need new transitions and effects for your projects with a fast turnaround, you should definitely download our editing presets at our website, 11percent.net. We have preset packs ranging from transitions and camera shakes all the way to cinematic title cards and 4k overlays. Also right now if you buy one preset pack you can get a second pack of your choice entirely for free. Saving time is the best investment any editor can make for themselves so whether you're using Premiere Pro, After Effects, or another editing software entirely these packs are super easy to use saving you hours of work. Make sure to check them out at 11percent.net while this buy one get one free bundle lasts. Now let's get back to the tutorial. First things first load up Premiere Pro and import your videos. Okay wait wait wait, wait. stop 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 stop. I'm gonna admit, I kind of cheated here. While recording this first video, I actually forgot to hit save on my After Effects. I lost all my progress. But right before I started all over again, began rotoscoping my subject again, I realized that I can just use a green screen and save all this time rotoscoping. So yeah, I cheated. I went back outside and shot the same spinning object shot on a green screen this time. Also, this obviously depends on the object you use. If you have green in your object or blue in your object, you probably won't be able to do it. But if you're shooting this running gun, you can also just shoot this on any contrasting background and rotoscope inside of After Effects or runwayml.com has like this AI rotoscope feature. It's really cool. It's also free. If you have a green screen, use it. If not, then just rotoscope. Okay, so now we're really back inside of Premiere Pro. First, I'm going to Window, Extensions, and clicking Auto Edit. I'm gonna upload all the clips and click auto edit to trim through and leave all the best shots because hell no am I trimming all this footage myself. Then I'm gonna find my favorite kicking shot and cut right before I finish kicking in the air. I'm now gonna drag the spinning shot of the shoe right after. Make sure your shoe does at least one clean full rotation. Then import your background photo and drag it below your spinning shoe layer. Right after that, you can cut to the shot of you catching your object. The goal is to make it feel seamless, like you kind of like kick it in the air and then it comes back down and lands on your foot. Now draw a very simple mask around your shoe layer and you may have to do some minor path keyframing to cut out the string that's like holding your object. Now go to effects and search for the ultra key effect, drag and drop onto your shoe layer and key out the green screen. Now your spinning shoe should be transparent over your background. Depending on how fast or slow you spun your object, you might want to duplicate your spinning layer one or two more times to lengthen the clip, then select all of them, right click and nest them together into one layer. Now it's time to speed ramp this effect. Right click the FX panel on your nested shoe clip and select time ramping and then speed. 
This line on your layer now controls the speed based on timestamps. Use the pen tool to select two points on your spinning shoe clip, and you can now drag up on the line in between these two markers to speed the clip up or slow it down for just that part of the clip. I recommend starting the clip fast so that the shoe spins in really fast and then slows down and then speeds up again. You can smooth the speed by selecting one speed marker, splitting the marker, and then dragging down on the anchor point to create a more Bezier type speed ramp. And boom, just like that, one on one course on speed ramping right right there. Y'all should really pay me. <laughs> no, we got we got the video editing preset packs, the camera shake packs at 11%.net and the, the AI auto edit plugin if you want to if you want to support us. Much appreciated. Also, go add a Gaussian blur to your background photo so that it becomes more blurry and out of focus. And then we have like a cool depth of field effect. Here, you may also want to set keyframes and animate the position of your spinning shoe layer or your spinning object layer. Whatever you want it to do, like pop up, slide down, or do a certain direction motion, it really all depends on the item and like whichever movement that you shot and you like pretended to throw it. So if you throw it to the right, then make sure you animate your object coming in from the right. Or if you threw it up, then make sure you animate your object, the position of the object coming up. So just very, very dependent on what you shot. I just animated the position of my shoe to start at the bottom and then just slowly move to the center of the frame. You can do so with simple keyframes. Also, before we move on, you also need to animate the background photo to make it look like your object is flying upward. So make sure you start the photo at the very same shot as your original clip then click the keyframe position at the very beginning of the clip, then go to the middle of the background image, drag it to the top, and then go to the end of your clip and then drag it back down. Right click these keyframes and click Bezier, so that way we have that animation applied to your background photo. Now it's time to spice this all up by adding the camera shakes. You can do this the standard way by making your own camera shakes with the transform effect, but I'm lazy today and I'm just gonna use the auto edit plugin. Bring your playhead in between the first cut, go to the manual visual effects tab and select transition. Pick a cool camera shake that you like and then just hit add at playhead and boom, instant camera shakes that shake up and down with the motion of the video. We have like a cool camera shake motion in between our cuts. Looks really nice now. And now to really finish everything up, just to put the bow on top, we're gonna create an adjustment layer and you're gonna search for three effects and apply them in this exact order. First, lens distortion, then VR chromatic aberration, and then finally another Gaussian blur effect. Set the lens distortion curvature up to negative 16, set the chromatic fall off distance to 80, and Gaussian blur to 45. Finally, select an ellipse circle mask only for the Gaussian blur effect, only for the Gaussian blur effect. Make sure it's not under the opacity, and then bring up the feather on that Gaussian blur mask. And just like that, guys, that's how you create an insane 3D transition effect without any 3D software, completely practical. Hope you found something useful today. If you wanna try any of the camera shakes or use the AI auto edit plugin that we use in this video, I've linked to everything down below. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please be sure to leave a comment down below. I love to hear what you guys have to say. And also, if you wanna learn how to create this animated road sign effect inside of After Effects, you can check out this video linked right here.